Good evening, everyone. This is Aaron Parker, and I am super excited to be on this live webinar tonight. Um, I've never had an opportunity like this before. I'm going to introduce someone to you here in just a second, and uh, I'm just super excited to be here. Thank you so much for jumping on. Again, this is Aaron Parker, and th this, this information that you're about to, to learn about tonight, I want to challenge you to pay very close attention. I know that we've got you know distractions, Facebook and cell phones and stuff. This is really important, and the gentleman that you're about to hear from, I have, uh, I've seen him, I've heard from him over the years, many years, as being an expert in the field. He is a, a CPA um, attorney for what was an attorney for the IRS and he is a tax attorney and and this gentleman Mr. Sandy Botkin is an expert in in, in saving money for taxes and this this is really um, it, it hits home for me because for those of you that know me my wife and I uh, we were in the network marketing industry for many years but we never made money in the network marketing industry and amazingly enough uh, we were still able to save thousands of dollars on taxes even though we weren't making money in our home-based business and that's exactly what you guys are gonna hear tonight on this on this webinar and you know th this information is is really important for your business I just hope you guys really truly understand that um, and, and by the way I want to give a quick shout out to Chris Gross he is from networking times I actually met Chris at the no excuses summit just a couple weeks ago in Vegas um, you know I had heard a lot about tax Bot, this program I started taking a look at it I was I was simply blown away because over the years as I was just mentioning um, the you know having to do my taxes and, and go to like H&R block and all that kind of stuff having to keep track of everything is can sometimes be very tedious and it's really not fun and when I started looking at this program, TaxBot, for one, you guys probably have heard of uh, Todd Falcone. He, he loves this and recommends this to his whole team. There's a lot of you know, big, big um, leaders in the industry that love this program. And I just absolutely fell in love with it because it takes something that's tedious that we don't like to do, and that's taxes, and makes it fun. It makes it easy. It takes care of all the, you know, the, I mean, you're going to learn about it tonight, but it just makes the, the painstaking process much more enjoyable and I'm just so honored and so um, just just amazed that I have this opportunity right now to introduce this gentleman Mr. Sandy Bakken are you there sir yes I am thank you thank you so much Aaron I really appreciate it uh, by the way I'm, I'm very honored to be participating with you and Kathy but I'm also honored folks to speak to you self-employed individuals I mean heck my mom was self-employed I'm self-employed and I really admire entrepreneurial spirit. I, I, that's why I've been going around the country sh trying to show people how they can basically reduce their taxes substantially, have a really side income just from the reduction in taxes in less than two minutes a day. Now, this is a very content-oriented program. Those of you who have heard me before know that's the case. And this is sort of like a 30,000-foot overview of what's in some of my books. So you're going to want to get some notes. We, we're going to move, and I'm going to move very quickly. We only have about 50 minutes. And then we're going to leave a few minutes open for questions. So get some paper and get a pen because we are going to move. If you have any questions, type them in to the chat box. As, as my friend Chris would say, type them early, type them in. And we'll try and take them at the end of the program if time permits. Fair enough? First question, I have a number of questions I'm going to be asking you, actually. Has anybody ever had the experience of being overbilled for something on your credit card that maybe you purchased, or maybe you got billed for something you didn't purchase. I mean, that happened to me. I was in Florence, Italy, and I came back for with, I had dinner with my wife in Florence, and we got a bill for about $120 on my credit card, except we got the bill twice. Would you agree with me that the higher the amount, the more aggravating it became? Would you, would you agree? How did this happen to you? And how did you feel about it? Did you let the overcharge go, or did you do like I did, demand a refund? And I was really ticked off. Well, I want you to hold on to that feeling because, frankly, I'm about to make it worse. Now I'm going to ask you another question. I'm going to get back to this question as well. Do you want to just pay all the tax that you legally owe, or do you want to pay a lot more? What if you as a business person 
were overpaying your taxes by literally thousands of dollars a year. I don't mean a credit card payment by 50 or 100. I mean thousands. Would you want to know about it and do something about it? Of course you would. I mean, if you're saying, yeah, absolutely. Well, over the next, I'd say roughly 50 minutes, I am going to prove to you that you are, in fact, overpaying your taxes by literally thousands of dollars a year. But the good news is don't worry, because I'm going to give you a very simple, easy solution to help you keep thousands of your own money every year for the rest of your life. And you may be thinking, oh boy, what's this going to cost? Here's the total price in terms of time, effort, and money. The solution will require less than two minutes a day, I promise. One finger's effort and cost zero new out-of-pocket expenses. How's that? If that sounds fair, then let's get started, OK? First of all, I've been lecturing for over a quarter of a century, and I've helped hundreds of thousands of business owners save tens of millions, probably hundreds of millions in taxes. I'm going to be offering some really shocking facts, and that's going to sound, I think, too good to be true. So because of that, I want to give you my background qualifications in order to gain your trust so that you may know that I know what I'm talking about. First of all, I'm a CPA. I'm also a tax attorney, and I'm a former trainer of IRS attorneys nationwide. So if you think of an IRS agent as a rat, I guess that makes me the head rodent. I've been president of my own tax education organization for over a quarter of a century. It's actually been over 30 years. In fact, I've been lecturing uh, with the, I'm a featured tax coach with Donald Trump at the Tony Robbins Wealth Seminars. As uh, Aaron said, I'm a best-selling author. I'm the best-selling author of two books, actually. The first one is called Lower Your Taxes Big Time. And I strongly recommend that you get that. It's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. It's, re it's very reasonable. It's not expensive. And the second one, which is now garnering tremendous reviews, it was just on, uh, mentioned on, uh, on AOL, front page, a few, a few days ago, in fact. And that's Achieve Financial Freedom Big Time. And I've served as a guest tax expert on Fox, CNN, CBS, CNBC. I was, I was cited, as I mentioned, on AOL and so on. And I'm not saying this to impress you. I just want you to know that I really know what I'm talking about. And, and that's the important thing, I think. Okay? Here is shocking fact number one. You know, it's commonly believed that debt is the number one household expense for most families. And that's wrong. The number one expense in North America is taxes. It exceeds what most families pay for food, housing, transportation, and clothing combined. Now, here's another shocking fact regarding retirement. There was a study done a number of years ago by Harvard, I think it was Harvard, and they wanted to know what percentage of people can retire with the same standard of living they had before retirement at age 65. The answer was shocking. Only 4% can retire with the same standard of living. Now, what does that mean to you? 96% of the people, of everyone on this line, unless they do something, will either have to continue working, live on some form of charity, live off family, or reduce their standard of living. And by the way, this number is going to be worse, because when this, uh, when this survey was conducted about 15 years ago, most people had pensions. A lot of pensions are no longer in existence now. Everything now is 401ks. Here's the point. If you can get money back by saving big money on taxes, which is probably your number one expense, can't that help cure your retirement worries? Because I want you to think about this. Because you do have a choice on who gets your money with proper tax planning. You really do. Now, this is going to sound kind of funny, but it's true. Both the US government and Canadian government are among the biggest bookies in North America. Why? Because they're betting on you big time to succeed in your business. And if you don't understand this, then you're betting against your own success big time. My goal is to help you place a winning bet on your own business success by maximizing the tremendous great government tax benefits available for business. And by the way, in this uh, seminar, this webinar, I'm going to be using a bet as sort of a kind of fun way to get you to understand that lots of people are betting on uh, your success. Not, you know, that includes your upline and many other people, including me, by the way. And here's why I'm betting on you. We have two tax systems in North America. Did you know that? You know, when I say that, a lot of people say, oh, sure, Sandy, one for poor and maybe one for rich. That's close. There's one to make you rich, and then there's one that's going to severely limit your chances. And that's for employees. Employees get no business tax breaks, and they're taxed on almost every dollar from dollar one. Whereas self-employed people, they get all the deductions they want in business, 
and they only pay tax on the net. They get to drink all the deductions before the government gets one drop. So employees, and another thing, by the way, employees really don't get that many deductions, despite what you may think. But the tax breaks that make you rich, as I said, are reserved for business owners. They're the ones who are the job creators. You know, the tax benefits are enormous if you choose to take advantage of them. But you've got to know about them to take advantage of them. And by the way, a lot of times people ask me, what's the reason we have two tax laws? And why is one for business better? The reason is very simple. Jobs, jobs, and more jobs. Small business creates over 70% of the job growth in North America. And what's good about this, the business taxes is that it creates deductions which will generate cash that you never have to pay back. I want you to think about this. In fact, not to mention, by the way, there's another reason that there are good tax breaks for business. There's an old saying, from small acorns come big trees. You think Apple Computer started with 200,000 employees? No, it started very small. It out of Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak's garage. You think Microsoft started with a couple hundred thousand people? Heck no. It started small. So Congress knows that by subsidizing small business, by subsidizing people like you and me, we can create jobs in the future. Small business is the job incubator in North America. That's why this country has been so prosperous. Now, Mary is a good example of a business owner versus an employee. On the left side, you're going to see a number of expenses. First of all, any of these expenses are normally not deductible, but more importantly, even if they were deductible as an employee business expense, it's got to exceed a high threshold. So for example, let's say she has a cell phone. Now, that's normally non-deductible as an employee. Uh, she has mortgage or rent, which is also non-deductible. Maybe with a mortgage, you can deduct the interest as an itemized deduction in the US, but that's it. If you pay rent, you can't deduct anything. Car expenses are not deductible as an employee unless they exceed a high threshold. You go out to a restaurant with your spouse or your friend, that's normally not deductible. You go to the movies, you go play golf, also not deductible. Medical expenses for 2013, are, uh, they have a much higher threshold than they had last year due to Obamacare. In fact, this year, it's 10% of your adjusted gross earnings. Just went up. And there's a lot of other expenses that you can't deduct as an employee. But I want you to think about it. If Mary has a self-employed business, like you all do, then portions of these expenses now become deductible. We call this, I have a name for it, redirected tax dollars. So let me give you a good example. What if your yearly tax bill was, let's say, 8000 bucks a year? I think many of you pay more than that between federal, state, and Social Security and all the other things. But wouldn't you rather redirect some of that 8000 to help fund your business that could possibly earn you years of future income? Think about that. You know, either way, you're going to spend the same $8,000, aren't you? It's just a matter of what you get back in return, isn't it? I call this return on taxes. What's interesting is you really have a choice in many cases where your money goes by proper planning. Now, which do you think is the wiser choice for your future? Do you think that maybe this could be one of the reasons millions of money smart people have home-based businesses? I mean, to me, it's a very wise choice, isn't it? Now, let me ask you another question. Do you have a cash rebate card? What does your cash rebate card give you? Does it give you points? Maybe you get 1% rebate, 2%. Uh, I get. I have a card that gives me 5% on certain things. What if you had a cash rebate card, and I'm not exaggerating, that could give you back between 20 to 53%, seriously, cash back, on almost everything you buy and almost everything you do? Would you like that? Here's the good news, folks. You already have this card. It's your business card. Because when you're in business, you get to deduct any legitimate expenses that are ordinary and necessary to your business. You get this huge cash rebate on expenses that are deductible. And by the way, that's what a deduction means, by the way. And I want to emphasize something. A deduction is not cash. The cash that you receive is the amount of the deduction times whatever tax bracket you're in. Thus, let's say you get a deduction of $1,000 and you're in the 40% tax bracket, which is a combination, by the way, of federal, state, and Social Security and Medicare. So it's not that high. Um, so on $1,000, on $1, if you're in the 40% bracket, you're saving $400 in cash on that $1,000 deduction. So if you generate $10,000 in new deductions for the year, that will generate in this bracket $4,000 in cash. This is, by the way, a lot better than an exemption that you get for a new child in your family, but it's a lot less painful than giving birth and by the way, moreover, this re uh, rebate can be as high as 53%, depending on your income and depending on your state of residence. 
You know, I ask people all over the country, what do they spend on various categories? And it's, a set, it's unbelievable that how many people don't know. And here's give you an idea of how big taxes are and other expenses. Here's a study that was done by a financial firm. And it's amazing to me that many people don't really know this. The study shows, first of all, that for the average American, they pay roughly 20% of what they make each paycheck in debt payments. Now, debt includes all debt. I'm talking mortgage debt, education loans, personal loans, car loans, everything. And by the way, this is an average. I've seen this as high as 36%. This is really an average. Now, in addition, there is a day, I'm sure you've heard of this, called Taxpayer Freedom Day. And the way this works, let's pretend that you have to pay all your taxes in full every year before you can take any of the money you earn. If you have to do this, then according to the web, you would basically be working for free until April 17th. Well, if you take April 17th and divide by 365, that means that the average person pays roughly 33% of what they make in taxes. And again, depending on the state you're in, depending on your income, this could be as high as 53%. Okay? So if 33% on the average goes out in state and federal taxes and Social Security and Medicare, and 20% goes out in debt, well, that leaves you 47% for everything else. What is everything else? Food, repairs, vacations, insurance, education for your family, emergencies, and all other expenses. And by the way, don't forget retirement. No wonder it feels like you can't get ahead, and no wonder less than 4% of the people at age 65 can retire with the same standard of living. This is the reason, because you have to live on half of what you're making. Now, here's another really interesting question. Who are the biggest tax cheats in North America? Would you like to know? Because the, I'm about to tell you is going to sound pretty shocking. And here's the answer. It is a fact that honest business owners cheat themselves out of thousands every year in legal deductions. Why? Because they lack the tax knowledge and don't know how simple, fast, safe, and painless maximizing their business deductions can be. In fact, it's shocking to people when they realize that. In fact, I estimate that small business owners overpay their taxes by over $100 billion a year. That's with a B, folks. And based on my 30 years of experience, I would say easily over 95% of those people didn't think they overpaid. Now, why? Well, there's basically three reasons. The first is procrastination. Procrastination is a major killer. I like to think of it as an alarm clock. If you don't set your alarm to get up for work or to meet, have an appointment, you may not get up. You may miss the appointment. Well, if you don't have something triggering you every day to do the right things, the right questions, the right documentation, certain things on your car, what happens? You forget. You don't do it. Procrastination is a huge killer. The second reason is total lack of tax knowledge. You know, you don't know what you don't know. And not knowing, I can promise you, is very, very expensive. And the third reason is fear of the IRS. The good news is that there's no need to fear them. Because with my help, you can play totally within the IRS rules and easily keep thousands more of your own money. The bottom line is who everyone should really fear is themselves and their own continued lack of knowledge about all the legal rights as a business-owning taxpayer. So here's my point. IRS isn't costing you money. You are. You're voluntarily giving IRS more of your money through educational neglect and procrastination than I promise you would ever pay in fines. But we're going to fix that for the willing, aren't we? Now, there are a few cash drain myths that can help explain this. The first myth is actually only seven words long, and yet it causes more people to lose money than probably any single financial mistake. And that seven word myth is, my accountant takes care of my taxes. Most people that say this, by the way, don't even have an accountant. They just deliver a shoebox of receipts to a tax preparer at year end, which is a huge costly error and a bad choice. You know, my point are accountants are essential. I don't even know why people who are self-employed do their own tax return. That is absolutely asinine. And I recommend that everyone in business have an accountant. But if you don't know what to tell your accountant or to give your accountant by December 31st, you've got a big problem. If you don't have the high-quality tax documentation in place, there's only so much they can do for you with poor records. I mean, they want to help you, but it's got to be a team effort. Now, here's another myth, and this, is, this myth is really interesting. I've had a lot of people come up to me and say, hey, Mr. Botkin, you know, I don't pay taxes. In fact, I get a refund every year. I can't believe how many people think they don't pay taxes because they get a refund. It's shocking. So I actually did an analysis. I asked myself, okay, let's say I have a single individual, and he, a single person, and he makes or she makes $50,000 a year net 
of all their deductions. How much do they pay in taxes? Now, what's interesting, on 50000 between federal, state, and Social Security, they pay $12,917. Now, you'll notice estimated tax withholding is more than, than the tax usually owed. And the reason is twofold. One, the government wants to make sure they get their money. But the second reason is when the, when the withholding is more and you're getting a refund, you're feeling good. Are you feeling better, aren't you? But the point is, you may be getting a refund, but you're not. You're still paying $12,917. This translates to 25.8% of your net taxable income you're paying in taxes. This is only on someone who's making $50,000 a year, net of their deductions. This is not Donald Trump here. And if you're making $100,000 a year, then this translates to 32.4% of what you make in taxes. And if somebody makes $250,000, this translates to 37.7% of what you make in taxes. So even though you're getting a refund, you're still paying taxes, and you're paying a lot of them. Now, here's another real big myth. What's the difference in tax benefits and fringe benefits that you can give yourself between a home-based business and, let's say, a brick-and-mortar business, or even a Fortune 500 company provides? Here's the answer, and the answer is very surprising. None. You get exactly the same tax advantages if you want them, as long as you know about them, believe it or not. In fact, in my experience, real difference between the traditional brick and mortar business and a part-time home-based business owner is all in their head. In fact, in my book, Lower Your Taxes Big Time, I have 130 pages on fringe benefits. And I recommend you get that book. In fact, I recommend you get them both because every single one of those fringe benefits also applies to home-based business. The tax law treats home-based businesses, Fortune 500 companies that work in the United States, and um, brick and mortar business exactly the same. But the traditional business owner, because of higher overhead, must take tax breaks more seriously. But I think that's changing as home-based uh, business owners get smarter about how the great tax laws can fund their business. Now, here's another interesting myth. Let's say you work your business full-time versus part-time. Let's say you have a part-time, you're working your business part-time. What's the tax difference, or tax differences, I should say, or fringe benefits that you can give yourself versus what you can give a full-time business owner? Answer, none. Full-time business owners and part-time business owners get exactly the same tax benefits. You do not, I want to emphasize this, have to work full-time. But just like a full-time owner, you have to run your business like a business and pursue a profit and thoroughly document your activities in a tax tracker or tax organizer. Now, here's another interesting myth. And this is really, I don't know where this came about. What happens if you're not making money yet? Don't you have to have a profit or have to have a profit three out of five years or something like that? Did you hear that? Well, here's the answer. The government, remember I said the government's among the biggest bookies in North America, and they subsidize your business. And they subsidize you in two ways. First way is that if you have a loss in your business, you can use that loss against any form of income you have, such as uh, rents, pensions, capital gains, or even earned income from a job. So let's take an example. Let's say you earn $50,000 a year in your job, but your part-time business generates a $10,000 loss. You only pay taxes on the net, which is $40,000. That's one way they subsidize you. The second way the government subsidizes you, and this is especially true in the U.S., is that if your business generates a loss, uh, and that loss exceeds your income for the year, as long as you're running your business like a business and not like a hobby, which means you're just trying to make money, you can carry back all documented losses and actually get a refund from the federal and state government for the last two years of taxes that you pay. You actually get a check. In fact, in Canada, if there's any Canadians on, you get a three-year carryback. Now, once you use all, once you carry back those losses, there's even better. There's actually a third way they subsidize you. You then carry forward any excess losses up to 20 years and offset the, up to the next 20 years of earnings. So you never lose a properly documented business deduction. As long as you're running your business like a business, which means you're trying to make money, you can have losses. I want to emphasize that. Now, how would you like, let me ask you a question here. If you have a full-time job and are actively pursuing a profit, let's say on a part-time side business, I have some great news for you. But first, let me ask you a question about your full-time job. What are the chances of you getting or your spouse getting a $1,000 a month raise in the near future, like this year? I bet they're not great. 
Now comes the great and I think maybe shocking news. I am sure that I can get you the equivalent of that raise by using the great tax laws designed to help part-time and full-time profit-seeking business owners like you. And here's how. If you generate $18,000 in business deductions and you're in the 40% tax bracket, that's about the same in net spendable income as a $12,000 raise. Because by the time you pay 40% of the $18,000, you're left with about $7,200 net to you. Same thing on that $12,000 raise. By the time you pay 40%, you're left with 60%, which is $7,200. Now, tell the truth. Wouldn't you be ecstatic about getting a $1,000 a month raise? Come on, wouldn't you? Then you should be just as ecstatic about this $18,000 in deductions. In this case, it comes out to be a $7,200 tax savings. It is the same money in net spendable income. I want to emphasize that. Do you see this? That $1,000 raise is only as good as the amount you can keep for yourself. You know, you might have heard the famous Ben Franklin quote, a penny saved is a penny earned. I bet you all heard that, right? Well, when Ben wrote that, there were no income taxes. A penny saved today is actually better than a penny earned. In fact, it's worth about 1.5 to 2 cents for every penny you save, believe it or not. So be overjoyed. I just got you the exact equivalent of a $1,000 raise you probably didn't think you can get. In fact, we're going to get you even better than 18,000 deductions. And it gets a lot better. How would you like to be able to get gas, the equivalent, for free? I mean that, literally. Would you like that? I can prove it, and here's how to do it. I'm going to be using the government method, as, which is a more conservative approach. And as you now know, when you get a deduction, this essentially reduces the actual cost you know, tremendously. Let me give you an example. And I'm going to use the IRS method in the United States. IRS gives you 56 and a half cents a mile for every mile you drive for business. Now, how do you prove it was for business? The answer is very simple. You have to have a good log or a good tax tracker. That's how you prove it. And Canadians also get an IRS approach or a government approach. By the way, I want you to notice something in the United States. You also get 14 cents for charity. A lot of people miss this. I've, that'll give you a $3.72 cash things on that $11.30 deduction. That's what it means. Now, if gas is three fifty a gallon, and you get, let's say, 20 miles to the gallon, make it easy to compute this, then you're basically making 22 cents a gallon. You're actually, so you're, not, you're, you're really not only getting gas for free, you're making a profit. Does everybody see this? And by the way, let me give you another big tip that a lot of people miss. There are two methods of running for car. There's the, uh, the actual method where you take part of your gas, oil repairs, insurance, wash, wax, depreciation. And then there's the IRS method, otherwise known as the government method, which is in lieu of gas, oil repairs, insurance, wash, wax, depreciation, and so on. But there are two things you get in addition to that. Number one, you can deduct interest on car loans to the extent that you use your car for business and sales tax to the extent you use your car for business. So if you use your car 80% for business, 80% of the sales tax is deductible as a business expense on your Schedule C. 80% of the interest is deductible as a business expense, and that's in addition to the IRS method. In fact, you might know the government just passed new physical quit rule that says you get the difference between the state income tax deduction and the sales tax, and you get to choose whichever one you want. But if you use your car for business, you can deduct both state income tax on your tax return and can claim the sales tax and interest on your car to the extent you use it for business. You know, a lot of people didn't know that. I met a lot of accountants who didn't even know that, that you can do this with the IRS method. I know someone who filed an amended tax return for three years and got back over $6,000. This is a big deal, folks. Now, here's another tip. Normally, and I know I'm going quickly, this is sort of a 30,000-foot overview of what's in my videos and what's in my book, but we have limited time here. Normally, personal trips aren't deductible. So if you take your kids to tutoring, or you go to football games, it's not deductible. If you go to your mom's, it's not deductible. So here's what you do. This is what I do. You ask yourself, do you have a client or a prospect or an opportunity meeting somewhere near where your personal trip is, maybe where your mom is? If so, a substantial part of that trip now becomes deductible. And by the way, your mom doesn't have to live where you are. Maybe your mom lives in Hawaii and you want to find some education or some business building activity in Hawaii. You know, same type of thing. It could be a business trip even though you spent part of the time visiting your mom. The key is documentation of the business. 
that you did uh, nothing else on the trip matters to the government. All they care about is your primary purpose of the trip was business. You can still have fun or you can still see your mom. And by the way, this trick will help you get more of that free gas I was talking about. Now, let's talk about something fun, entertainment. In both the U.S. and Canada, you are allowed to deduct 50% of your meal and 50% of your entertainment for anyone who is a potential prospect or can in some way increase your business. So my question to you is very simple. Who are potential users of your products? Who are prospects for your business? You know, remember, as a business owner, you are always in pursuit of a profit. Like for example, do your best friends qualify as potential users of your product? Sure. Can they give you referrals? Sure. How about your adult family members? Sure. How about your next door neighbor? Sure. So if everyone is a prospect, let me ask you a question. How can you ever have a non-deductible lunch with someone? You can't. That's the question I asked the former IRS commissioner. And if you're not ringing off almost every single meal you have with someone, you're not talking enough about business. You're not to, you could be talking about a new product. You could be talking about the results you've gotten, the extra income you're making. Maybe something new company is doing, an exciting company event you attended, an award you received. I mean, the list is endless. And by the way, when you're talking about your business, you're accomplishing two very important things. First of all, you're promoting your business in pursuit of a profit. Secondly, you're offering proof that you're running your business like a business. Now, by the way, I don't want you to think that you always need to make a sale when you promote. When you're talking about your business, you're advertising your business. When a big company runs a TV spot, do they sell everybody that watches it? Of course not. However, it's still a legally deductible business expense. You are no different in the eyes of the tax law. You just advertise differently. You know, as a small home-based business owner, you advertise by word of mouth. And so expenses related to advertising are just as legally deductible as, say, a TV spot. Do you get that? Do everybody understand that? You know, any conversation you have with anybody regarding your business is reminding them to think about your product or service or think about the opportunity. The key is simple documentation of the event. Now, I want you to think about this. How many times have you mentioned something about your business over a meal and maybe just paid the check? Because if you didn't deduct that, you literally just left money on the table and you're overpaying your taxes. Now you know you have a choice. You really do. Pay or get paid when the bill comes. But it gets a lot better. There is something in the Internal Revenue Code as well as in the Code of Canada called associated entertainment. I bet you never heard that, too. And you're going to love this. You can write off 50%. Associated entertainment means fun. You can write off 50% of your fun as well as 50% of your friend's fun if you choose to pay for them. And if, and this is not Sandy Bodkin talking, this is IRS talking, if you talk business within the same 24-hour day as the fun, does that give you enough time? <laughs> so let's take an example. Let's say that I meet with Aaron in his house, and uh, we, we talk, and he was telling me he lives in, in Myrtle Beach, and we talk business. And then we drive to a football game right afterwards, or a hockey game. Uh, is, and maybe we continue talking business in the car. And let's assume that's my intent was to talk business. Is talking business within the same 24 hours as the front? Did we do that? Yes. We talked business in the house, the car, and then we went to the hockey game or the, or the, or the football game. Let's say um, Aaron and I talk business on lunch. And Aaron says, you know, Sandy, it's such a beautiful day. What do you say we go play golf? Okay? Is that talking business within the same 24-hour day? In other words, we talk business over lunch, and then we go to play golf. Yes. So golf now became a business deduction. I want you to understand what's going on here because we have great tax laws for business. If you know what you're doing, you can literally eat away your taxes. Think of it. You can literally play away your taxes. I mean, it's just enormous. But you have to have certain documentation that I'll get into. Now, let's talk about a home office. I'll bet you probably heard a home office is going to trigger an audit and it's not worth it. Well, I'm here to tell you that in 1999, Congress liberalized the home office rules for Americans. And I want to ask yourself a question. Why would Congress do that if they didn't want the home office deduction used? If you don't have home office deduction, you are crazy. If you're eligible, which, by the way, most home-based business owners can be, again, knowing the rules for home office deduction and documentation are the keys. So let me give you an example of how valuable a home office is. 
There are three rules, but I want to give you an overview of just how this works. Let's say that you have a house. Here we go. That you use. That's one room for business. We're going to assume that that room represents one eighth of the square footage. Now, again, I just picked the number. It could be more. It could be less in your house. I'm just picking the number. Now, first of all, what does that mean? When you use a room one eighth for business, then one eighth of the total utilities become deductible. Now, notice. You didn't, uh, claim, if you don't claim a home office deduction, you can't write off these utilities. But by claiming a home office, now some of the utilities become deductible. You're redirecting your taxes in the good tax system. One-eighth of the mortgage interest becomes business interest. And by the way, yes, we can deduct mortgage interest on our tax return, but it's an itemized deduction. When it becomes business, it will not only reduce your taxes in a better way, because itemized deductions have to exceed a threshold, but also, it will reduce your Social Security and Medicare from your business. Okay? Now, one-eighth of the property taxes become deductible. One-eighth of the house could be depreciated. And this is worth th tens of thousands. I'm constantly asked, by the way, if I rent a house or I rent an apartment, can I do that part of the rent if I claim a home office? Yes. In fact, in this example, one-eighth of the rent would be deductible. One-eighth of the maid service, one-eighth of the alarm service, the repairs, the insurance. I mean, this really adds up. This is a big deal. In fact, to give you an idea of what kind of a deal this is, let me give you a spreadsheet example. And there's a lot here, but I, I, I want you to see what's involved here, and I'll, I'll explain it to you. This is an individual, Mary, who has a cell phone. And we're going to assume that she's in the 33% tax bracket, which is the average for most Americans. The cell phone let's say is used 90% of business. And we're going to assume that she spends $120 a month uh, for that cell phone bill. Well, 90% of $120 is a $108 deduction. Now, a deduction is not cash. If she's in the 33% bracket, you've got to multiply that by 33%, and that translates to $35.64 in cash for that month. Okay? Let's take another example. Let's say you're home 20% for business. And you pay, oh, 2000 in rent, or if you pay 2000 in mortgage interest and taxes. Well, 20% of 2000 is $400. That's the deduction. If you're in 33% brackets, a deduction is not cash. You've got to multiply by 33%. That's $132 a month in cash. Utilities, same thing. Let's say you're, you pay, spend $400 in total utilities. You use your home 20% for business. That's an $80 deduction. In the 33% bracket, it's $26.40 in cash. Now. Uh, you can also, one more thing, let's, we, this person likes two more things. This person likes to go out and eat and have fun, and they spend $200 on meals for the month and 200 for fun. By the way, I've had people say to me, Sandy, I spend more on meals and fun in a day than $400 at times. This is a month. We're assuming this is a monthly thing. I'm not being aggressive here. In both the U.S. and Canada, you can deduct 50% of that, 200 of the meals and 200 of the funds. So you can deduct $100 of each. In the 33% bracket, that's a $32 cash savings on meals and 33 on fun. And finally, we're going to assume they drive 200 miles a month for business. That's, by the way, only seven miles a day. I don't think that's so aggressive. That results in a $113 deduction. In the 33% bracket, that's $37.29. The point is, okay, the bottom line is that these six deductions alone generate $297 and 33 cents a month just from the cash savings. So when Aaron said he didn't make money in the business when he started his business, except he saved a lot of money in, ta in taxes, this is what he's talking about. And these are just six deductions. There are hundreds of deductions. I'm only covering a few. And this, by the way, assumes you didn't make any money yet. This translates to $3,568 a year in cash savings just from the good tax laws available to you, and this is only six deductions. Let me ask you, would this pay for your auto ship? Not only would it probably pay for your auto ship, but probably for some of your marketing. Do you think maybe it would be wise to spend just a couple minutes a day nurturing your tax money tree? And by the way, as I mentioned, this, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can totally and legally write off the equivalent of your kid's education and weddings. I did that with my daughter. I hired her to design my website, and I wrote off thousands. I mean, you can deduct, and there are other things you can do that to write off education away, the equivalent of education weddings. You can deduct 100%, up to 100% of your medical expense as a business expense and avoid all those thresholds and all the Obamacare increases. You can set up a pension plan that I promise you makes any government plan look small by comparison. 
you can write off probably up to well, probably eliminate up to forty percent of some of your of your Social Security and Medicare. I would you like to eliminate eighty percent or more of your capital gains? There's just much more. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Now, how do I stay compliant? First of all, you want to start keeping meticulous records, and you want to learn more about tax deductions and eliminate deduction recording procrastination habits. By the way, do you remember we talked about a 20 to 53 percent rebate? All these rebate cards have pages and pages of rules and fine print. Here, we only have three main rules. That's it. The first rule is you've got to run your business like a business and not like a hobby. Now, what does this mean? Well, business people work their, and I have a whole video on this, by the way, but business people work their business regularly. This means at least an hour to an hour and a half a day, four to five days a week. Hobbies do not. That might work once every two weeks for 12 hours. Business people have good tax trackers and tax organizers to keep track of their expenses and eliminate procrastination. That is critical. Hobbies do not. What happens if business people aren't making money? What do they do? Well, they, uh, they go to accountants, usually to generate financial statements to see where they can cut back. Hobbies do not. By the way, that's one reason why you should have an accountant. Business people meet with successful people and find out what they need to do to make money. And that's why you know it's network marketing is so great because you have a lot of people who are, have an invested investment in you. So you can contact your upline, your upline's upline. They're being paid for this. Or experts in the industry. And if they're, and if they're not making money, you want to, this business people want to know why and what they can change. Hobbies do not. Business people have complete documentation. Hobbies do not. The key is not whether you're making money. And I want to emphasize this. The key is that you're pursuing a profit. You're trying to make money. That is the key. And as long as you track your expenses according to IRS standards, you are absolutely bulletproof. If you don't have good records, then you're in trouble. Because if you get audited, you're not maximizing your savings. You can be hit with a pretty substantial penalty. And by the way, a lot of people say to me, well, wait a minute, Sandy. What about credit cards? Don't they work alone? Think again. Credit card statements do not work alone. They're not good enough. IRS agents love people who think that way because you need more information than the credit card provides. In fact, here's a question. Who has the burden of proof of documenting your expenses? Is it the government or do we do? And of course, the answer is we do. We have that burden of proof. In tax law, you are guilty until you prove your innocence. You have the burden of proof that all your deductions are business related and that you're following the rules. And if you don't meet that burden, you get no deduction. You know, my question to you is, what are you doing about it? I mean, if you do nothing, you won't meet this burden. You'll lose all of these deductions, and you could be hit with up to a 75% civil fraud penalty on top of that, plus interest. By the way, here's another interesting fact. IRS uh, wants to hire 16,000 new IRS agents once the budget freeze is over. And Canada wants to hire some more people, too. If you don't have good records, you're in trouble. If you get audited, and always have to fear the IRS. But by having good documentation that we'll mention here, in a couple minutes a day, you can literally cross audits off your list of things to worry about. Why don't you think about how that feels, OK? You know, this is a good time to repeat something that I said earlier. No need to fear IRS, because you can play totally within the rules and easily keep thousands more of your own money. The, per, the, per, the problem is who everyone should really fear is, frankly, themselves and their own poor documentation and continued lack of knowledge about all the legal rights as a business-owning taxpayer. Now, I've just given you an overview of how valuable tax knowledge can be. Believe me, I just touched the surface. I have shown you how, as a business owner, you can put thousands of dollars in your pockets. And now I'm going to show you how to get the maximum amount of tax cash back with the least amount of time, effort, and cost. How's that? But first of all, I want to emphasize something. And a lot of people don't realize this, but I'm not a documentation nut. In fact, I dislike documentation probably as much as you do. But one thing I find I can do, and that is if it's fast, simple, and easy. Frankly, I think anybody can do fast, simple, and easy. It's just a, a matter of choice, isn't it? So what's the easiest and best way to meet the burden of proof in, in the United States and Canada, for that matter, for your deductions. I was actually developing something almost for myself. And it's called, here it is, and it's called TaxBot. 
and it took me six years in development. And I promise you, it is the fastest and easiest way to maximize your savings. It works on the iPhone, the iPad, the Droid, the Droid tablet, and the web. The only place it doesn't work is the BlackBerry. And you can even work on multiple devices. Like I have an iPhone, my wife has a Droid. No problem. It works on multiple devices. Now, TaxBot is a fusion of both tracking tools and education that will literally save you thousands of dollars a year in under two minutes a day. I have hundreds of testimonials on this. You know, one reason I developed TaxBot is because I know how important good documentation is to keeping legal deductions. But you know what? I also know how important tax education is to maximizing your benefits. One with the other just doesn't produce the high return, safe results you're looking for. You need both. And I will assure you that the learning part will be so easy, you won't even realize how much you're learning and how fast you're learning it. You know, one thing we accountants have always believed, and you can ask any accountant this, the smarter taxpayer is generally the wealthier taxpayer. Now, with tax box, you instantly store receipts by simply, and you also snap photos of the receipts with an integrated camera. Then answer a few simple questions, take a picture, and the information is instantly stored on the web. And what's interesting is that this is very secure. It's stored on three different cloud servers in several cities to ensure record safety. You know, tax laws in both the US and Canada support electronic documentation like TaxBot. And so TaxBot conforms to their compliance rules. The point is that your records are documented in accordance, there's actually a ruling on this, with IRS and Canada Revenue Agent standards to ensure they are bulletproof. In fact, IRS just came out with a notice, very, it was a couple of days ago, that, that people who may be worried about hurricanes, tornadoes, fires, floods, must have all their records uh, digitized to make sure that they get the deductions and they can claim the casualty losses. Otherwise, they will get nothing. IRS themselves said this. TaxBot consists of two buttons. That's it. Add expense, add mileage. Can't get easier than that. You simply need to answer those simple questions. And what will happen is they will, you, the questions you need for each deductions that are required by IRS will pop up and alert you what to do. So let's take an example. Let's say I'm going to have lunch with Aaron. I would click on Add Expenses. And you'll get a menu of all the expenses which, by the way, are all customizable and editable. So let's say I have a meal. So I would pick meal. The minute I pick meal, the six required questions by IRS and Canada Revenue Agency automatically pop up. Who, what, when, why, and how much. So let's take an example. I take Aaron Parker out, and I, I put his name down. The meal will automatically show up as meals. I then type in his name. I would also type in the business purpose, such as I asked for referrals, or I talked about the business opportunity, or I talked about tax savings. I then type in the amount, which here is $25. I type in where, in this case you went to Chili's, or Tim Hortons, or Outback Steakhouse, whatever. The date is automatically in there, by the way, so my tax file will put it in there. Uh, or you, and you type in who the name, and you are bulletproof. Now, TaxBot has an integrated camera, like a scanner. So you would then take a photo of receipts, you click save, see that save on the top of the phone? All of the, the information, including the photo and the documentation, are stored together securely on the web so that if you lose your phone, you don't lose the information. The information is stored on the web. Now, you're going to love this. TaxBot has an integrated mileage tracker with a GPS system. Let's take an example. Let's say you start your trip by clicking on Add Trip. That's the second button. You will see the middle screen with a map that shows exactly where you are, and you can click on Start Mileage Tracking. Once you click on Start Mileage, you go on to where you're going, and then the minute you get to your destination, you click Stop Mileage Tracking. TaxBot will automatically, get this, put the mileage uh, or kilometers, if you happen to be in Canada, automatically put the starting address, which is required by the government, by the way, when you turned on the mileage tracker, the, the starting address will automatically be put in. The ending address, where you turned it off, this, the mileage tracker will automatically be put in. And the date will automatically put in. All you type in is the reason. And you are bulletproof. There's even a round trip feature if you want TaxBot to double the mileage automatically. And by the way, uh, we have a feature that, apply, that you're going to love. It applies if you forget to turn off TaxBot. There are two features, actually. First, one, you get a sticker to remind you to turn it on. But also, you can log on to TaxBot website and put in the beginning and ending address. And TaxBot will show the route 
and calculate the mileage. You can even adjust the route with your mouse. TaxBot will calculate the mileage. If that isn't cool, what is? Now, here's another interesting thing. TaxBot will automatically come with one account for either a credit card or bank account that you can register to keep track of spending that will integrate with TaxBot. So thus you can register, let's say, a credit card or a bank account, and TaxBot will, what they'll do is check daily your spending in these accounts and compare it to what's in TaxBot. If the expense wasn't logged in, TaxBot will send you a message and ask if the expense was business or personal. If it's business, they will ask you if you want to add the expense into TaxBot. So your deductions will be complete and all securely stored in one place. You know, at tax time, while your friends are going absolutely crazy doing taxes, with, the, with basically pressing download and then email to send the most complete tax file your tax preparer, I promise, has ever seen. In fact, TaxBot will eliminate paperwork and save you tons of time. And you don't have to worry about lost records and lost receipts like all those folks from Hurricane Sandy had. The tax time will become playtime, I'll tell you that. Now, the point is you track it, we store it. The records are stored with bank-level security according to IRS standards. You can edit the records, download reports, and never have to worry about losing the information. That's the important point. Now, here's something that's very interesting. TaxBot shows you in real time how much you are generating in deductions. This not only encourages use, but is a constant reminder that the government is really backing your business success with money. And TaxBot also continuously mentors you so that you understand and play safely within the rules. Many leaders, by the way, are putting their whole organization in TaxBot, and they really emphasize it. Because what's happening, they're finding when people are generating 300, 400, 500, 1,000 a month, and I'm not exaggerating, their attrition will go down tremendously. Now, you will also receive, you, TaxBot comes with me, by the way, you will receive expensive tax training on demand, 24 access, hour access to videos and audio tutoring. You will also get updates and hundreds of blogs, and not just on tax, but financial topics, such as how the new American Taxpayer Relief Law applies to you. Um, I just did a topic on the latest scams that are going on in North America and how to avoid them. How to get in-state tuition for an out-of-state student. That one was taken, was put on AOL, the front page. They copied, they got that. How to get, uh, how to evaluate nursing homes for your parents. I mean, you wouldn't believe all the stuff in there. And, and uh, by the way, I want to emphasize that I have specialized in teaching complex tax and financial stuff in very simple to easy to understand language to hundreds of thousands of businesses for over 30 years. I'm pretty good at it. Now you have a choice. You can spend two minutes a day complaining about taxes, worrying about them, or the same two minutes a day, and probably less, reducing them. One will cost you aggravation in money. The other will make you a lot of cash and bring you peace of mind and give you a tremendous return on taxes. You know, remember the question, do you want to pay all the taxes you legally owe or much more? I think your answer was overwhelmingly only the legal limit. Well, now you know the truth. You are overpaying your taxes. So I hope you're mad enough to take action. Now it's up to you. And I've given you a fast, cheap, legal, and easy solution. The rest is up to you. Believe it or not, some of the same people that would fight like crazy over a $50 or $100 card overcharge will do nothing about thousands in overcharges on their tax bill. I never understood this. And here's an interesting question. When is gambling not gambling? The answer is when you can't lose. Remember I told you that the government's one of the biggest bookies in North America because they're betting in your success? Well, guess who else is a bookie? Me. And here's why. Have you ever heard of a bookie, you know, get this, that offers you a bet you not only can't lose, but must win 20 times your bet or you get your money back? That's 20 to 1 odds or a guaranteed 2,000% rate of return in deductions every month. I want you to think about that for a minute. Where do you get that? Tax spot is like a tax deduction insurance policy to help make sure that you get the full financial benefits of all the great tax law government is trying to grant you as a business owner. In fact, tax spot is so fast, simple, and easy to use, it will enable you to document and securely store any tax deductible expense in just seconds. And these facts are able to make me uh, to give you an incredible zero risk bet. And here's my bet. I'm going to bet you ten dollars that tax spot must produce these results or it's free. Here are the results. First of all, TaxBot must enable you to track business deductions in a total of two minutes a day or less, guaranteed. TaxBot must produce a minimum 
of 20 times its monthly cost in tax deductions every month, 20 times, any month that you don't feel you've won in this area of the bet, TaxBot will refund your money for that month and cancel TaxBot service immediately, no questions asked. You know, honestly, the truth is this is not really a bet. In fact, it's not bad at all because I'm really, in essence, guaranteeing you a zero risk, 20 times your money in deductions. Best for letting me help you. Do you see that? And this is why TaxBot is now being used by billion-dollar corporations and tens of thousands of small business owners across U.S. and Canada. Sound like a safe bet? Now, here's the cost. TaxBot is normally $19.99 a month, but we've been beat up, and we have a contract to provide it for half off. And this is not going to go up in two months. This is it. TaxBot costs $9.99 a month, which is only 1.4 cents per hour. I think that's 33 cents a day. And by the way, that $9.99, that's before taxes. You get this tax spot's fully deductible. So you get that 20 to 53% rebate. That's what, $5.40 per month after taxes? I think that's 18 cents a day. Ready to make a $10 bet? Or you think this is maybe too big a gamble on something that costs pennies per hour, literally, and earns dollars per second? We need to think about that. Because if it sounds too good to be true, then let me ask you a question. What are you doing? If you fail to take action today, to do something about your taxes that is as simple and easy and fast and inexpensive in tax spot, when will you do it? And, 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 and what will you do? What's your plan? Who are some others following the tax spot plan? Here's a few of our clients. Let me just share with you a couple of people. First of all, we have tens of thousands of small business owners across North America. We have billion-dollar sales companies, Pennsylvania Association of Realtors, accountants and CPAs, by the way, are recommending tax spot throughout the country national trade associations, national franchise owners, Franklin Covey, you ever hear him? Business products, Tony Robbins, business consulting, and many, many more. You know, it's your money, it's your choice. 